Well, come on out everyone because I want you to see what I see when I come down my new set of steps and I am into, I don't even want to call it necessarily the backyard, but the back living room. And now it is 99% complete. We did a number of last minute things, some last minute plantings. And in my mind now, it's just, it's just play. It's mm -hmm. just zhuzhing, it is just, maybe in a layer of even more detail to get it to look exactly and live exactly the way I want it to live. So come on down and we hope to show you a lot of before and after pictures here. So we'll try to take a space and give you a before picture, but the overall template of before was that there was nothing here but grass. There was an old tree, hackberry tree here that we took down, but nothing else was here. So if you're a new viewer, this was just grass. There was no shrubbery, there was no patio, there were not even any steps, and the lattice work at the top of the fence did not exist at all. The lower level did, and we supplemented it with the, the lattice work to give me a little bit more privacy, give us all a little bit more privacy, but nothing that would impede air circulation. That was really important to us because it's always nice to have a breeze and there's a wonderful breeze today. So the reason I know that I was successful, I think in implementing my design ideas was because we had Easter Sunday out here mm -hmm. And it was brilliant. It really, I learned some things, which, which I will share with you a little bit later about entertaining back here. But nevertheless, it, it, was, it was wonderful. The weather was wonderful. The light was wonderful. We could have used a little bit more sun, but it was basically ideal. We just loved it. So let's take a break here before I tell you about some of the things that I have done out here. We will once again share my inspiration picture with you. I'll talk a little bit about what will come after the last frost date, which is April 15th, passes by and how I anticipate using each space. So what do you say, Stuart? Let's do it. Let's do it. So if you are a guest coming down the path into this gate, and by the way, one of you commented, when am I going to fix the squeak in this gate? And I will tell you that I'm not going to fix it. Well, the, the, the reason being very practical, when I'm working back here and that gate squeaks, I know that someone is entering, which is important to me from a security standpoint. I personally find it a little bit charming, but the other thing is, is if it squeaks and there's nobody there, then I know the wind is high and I need to secure it. So there is both a practical and a, a kind of experiential reason for why I'm not going to fix, fix that squeak in that gate um, but overall I pretty much have all of the mounds planted 
and my dream is that in short order they will all grow together and you will see very little exposed dirt, very little exposed mulch if you will. And how I know that is because of the rapidity with which some of the mounds are growing. So I've got Dragon Prince here, I've got Pancake Arborvita, but look here, I've got a little coconut budlia and just a little while ago that one looked like this and this one was moved later so it's coming out more slowly you can see another one that's in another stage of progression and there too all of these will completely fill this space and again I know that because they are growing very healthily and very rapidly and I also know that from experience because that's what they did last year so they will all grow together I will keep them all lightly clipped in a mounded form and the other plants that I have here are better boxwoods this is Babylon Beauty these along here and I've got a soft caress holly and what else? I've got some artemisia and some green mountain boxwood. And all of these will grow and they will grow together and it will be like an evergreen, an evergreen ground cover and I will love that and it will look more, it will look instantly mature. I like the way it looks now with some negative space but I'll, I think I will like it better once it all grows together. I really wanted this again to have the feel of an outdoor patio living room, not necessarily an outdoor garden. There have been a number of, uh, I, this, it's interesting to me, this backyard space was more controversial than anything I've done here, and I'm not really, sh I'm not really sure why. Uh, maybe it's because I had a vision that hadn't yet been executed, or I think a good part of it is because some of you were just wanting it to replicate exactly my backyard at my older place, and there's no way I can do that. This isn't the same template. I don't want it to be the same template. I want it to have uh, nods to my aesthetic, to my signature touches and things that I've done in the past, but I definitely don't want it to be identical. It feels like Linda. It feel, I think it feels like Linda. So, <laughs> so that's what's important to me. So from this vantage point, before I talk about anything more in particular, Stuart, can we just kind of do a slow roll from this angle so you can see my storage unit which I painted to match the color of the trim aka cottage gray and the table that I have there and a lot of you have asked me for what what the real name of this gray is and there isn't a real name <laughs> I just matched what was existing what I might try to do is is uh, get some exterior paint chips paint chip colors that mimic this and then I could tell you exactly exactly what it is otherwise it's just it's just a formula so we really really liked having all of these even though the space is small I nevertheless think it's got different garden rooms within a room and if the area to the left of the porch is any kind of room. I think of it kind of as, as just the kitchen or the larder. And why? And that's because this, when we ate outside um, for Easter, most of the food for just, uh, I guess, good food hygiene reasons we kept inside. But out here, we had staged all sorts of things. We had condiments here. We had, uh, mostly our drink station was here. I had my, my dispenser set up with, with lemon water, and I'm gonna go over some of those entertaining tips momentarily. But this was basically a service board. And then I also had here a table, yeah, a table 
slash ice chest that still has a few lone beers in there and a bottle of wine. And we filled this up with ice. And when it is not in service for that purpose, then I can move it elsewhere to be a table. But I love its good looks. I love its practicality. And I love the fact that it's dual purpose and it's served brilliantly. You may recall that early on I thought, oh, I might have a little refrigerator out here. I might do something like that and maybe have an outlet so that I could have a microwave for the workers when they're here. I decided not to do that. Why? Because the outlet would have been right up here, right front and center where I didn't want it to be. It would have been an ugly that I didn't want to have to work around constantly. And so this is a more practical solution. I also have a Yeti that we can bring out here if we need backups for that kind of thing. <laughs> but this fits in into my color palette. It all harmonizes beautifully and I'm happy with that. Now the Japanese maple I think looks spectacular here. Yeah. And this is a nod to the old house because at the old house to the right as you were going into the backyard I had a Japanese maple. And this one is beautiful. It looks so fresh. I will be limbing it up because right now it might look a little bit claustrophobic. But over time, as it grows, I will limb it up until eventually the bottom branches will be level with the bottom of the windows. It will grow that much. It will arch up and over the railings. It will give some shade, but it will not in any way kind of prevent me from getting back here and putting my firewood for the winter back on this bench, which you'll notice it's not here any longer because we're no longer using the indoor fireplace. But when it is time, this will be limbed up and in no way will it obstruct my ability to get to get firewood. So Stuart, let's take a little break here before we before we move on. What do you say? Now on the steps, the grand steps, there isn't a lot of color right now and that's because most of the color I have here will be rather subdued but it also won't arrive until April 15th, our, our last average frost date. So there you go on that and I'm not sure what kind of color I'll be using up here. I've definitely been in the orange and red tones and it will probably be some version of that. Mostly however it is evergreens. I showed you how I did a series of these faux terracotta pots that I aged and how they all have these beautiful skylight better boxwoods in them. As they continue to grow I hope that they will completely fill this space and you really won't see any distance at all between the bottom of the plant and the sides. It will be kind of almost like a gumdrop shape. I also have a skylight better boxwood planted here. These are two, uh, actually I'm not sure what variety they are. They might be Cranberry Creek or they might I don't think they're Green Mountain either. I bought these at my friend John Fluitz. If you are looking for something similar, I do recommend still the Cranberry Creek Boxwood that I told you guys about on Amazon last year. Now, when they first started out, man, it was they were just a great price. They were like $48. And then because there was such interest in them, I'm sorry, uh, the price went up. Last time I checked, they were $68, but I have to tell you that I haven't bought one this season, but if they are approximately this size and this shape, even though that's more expensive than they were, that is still a great, great price. Because as I told you earlier, I saw them recently at a nursery and they were $150. So that's still, it's still a great price. And I've had great luck with them. I've got them up front. Um, over here, I just have planted some more things. I've got some Green Mountain Boxwoods 
in this planter box, which I am loving. I bought this on Amazon. It is lightweight, it's waterproof and weatherproof, which I also find is, is really a good insular quality for in the winter if you try to overwinter your evergreens throughout the cold season and I do. So I've got just a couple of green mountain balls in here and this is a begonia, a, a more like a Rex begonia that I overwintered in the greenhouse. I'll probably be cutting it back, but for right now, this is what it looks like. Once I plant a little bit more seasonal color that will spill out over the edge, I'll cut it back. And then I've got a replica of it going down this side in the second pot there and I'll be doing giving it the same treatment. I love the way the color palette is all harmonizing together with the introduction of these hellebores that are aging just beautifully. I got these at Trader Joe's and when they went to seed they scattered little seeds everywhere and I just kind of blew them into the surrounding area and I'm hoping some of those will start appearing and germinate in the soil in the flower beds around here. And then there's just another boxwood at the end. I think I also pointed out to you guys last time that up here I'm using more of a black gray gravel, kind of a slate gray gravel, and I think that gives it a little bit more of a contemporary vibe, and I really like that. I took some of this same gravel and I just kind of broadcast it and mixed it in with the pea gravel that's over here in the potting area. So if this was a different room, this would be the potting shed. But first, on the west side here, this is repurposing what I already had. So I had these planters. This cherry laurel was a shop my garden find. I've talked about it before, but some of you are new followers. This I just dug up and transformed into a topiary. It seems yeah, it seems very happy here. And then I would never plant Vinca Major, as I have said. Some of this is redundant, but I think sometimes that's helpful. Um, but I would not plant Vinca Major in the ground, but as you can already see, it's really filling in on these plants nicely and it will cascade over the edge. And then I indeed did take my uh, hand operated works or battery operated works pruner to this uh, Nandina domestica. I cut it way back and it will in short order fill out and I think it'll be wonderful. And then I just had kind of a hodgepodge of additional plants, some of which were in the ground, some of which were in the pots. I had an extra hellebore. I had a couple of flirt Nandina, which I think are adorable. Um, I had a hunk of burn and love that I put in here and it's getting ready to flower. And then I just had some more of that Vinca Major, all of which came together. It will fill in pretty soon. This composition will be solid. And then because I wanted some height here, I, or height, that was another big, big thing. Is it height or is it height? <coughs> and so I looked it up and originally like width and length, it, it, the more common version was height. Now it is height, uh, but that seems to be a regional thing. Uh, growing up, it was from in my neck of the woods, it was always height. So, uh, but I will give, oh, well, I guess I'll go with height now. I was, it was funny, Stuart, because I was listening to Dr. Zorba on your health. I love it. And he get, I know, <laughs> on, on NPR, and he gets the same thing where people will call in and say, oh, oh yeah. it's not this or yeah, it's not the that. Police. The grammar police. <laughs> yeah. The grammar police. So, so we need to have the pronunciation police. I, think, I find it fascinating. Yeah, um, I don't take, I don't get defensive about it because I think so much of it is just regional. And I think regional differences are something to celebrate, but I, but I think it's fun. It's fun. But I digress. <laughs> um, so I put in a metal two-tour here that I may or may not spray paint that, that wrought iron black. But this will be profuse, and I'm happy because I was able to reuse a lot of the things that I already had. But the back porch, I think, has really come together. I think it's beautiful. I love the railings. Um, someone was saying, well, if you put the pots along the railing, then you can't hold on to the railing. Well, no, you can easily hold on to the railing <laughs> and you can hold on to it coming up this way too. 
<laughs> so, uh, and if you went down this way, which is seldom the case I find, people don't go down this way very often, but if they do, yes, you could hold on to this railing too. So, that is the, the end result of the wonderful steps, with the exception that I did plant more of that wonderful bronze beauty ajuga at the base. And if you look over here, you see how what I planted last year is very happy, is sending out lots of runners. And I anticipate that the newly planted four inch starts will do the same. And before long, most of this um, soil will be obscured and I can trim it back to the flagstones. And I think it will be, it'll be really, really beautiful. So Stuart, let's take a break here so I can get a drink of water and then we'll look at the rest of the backyard. And here we go. Here is my outfit du jour. One of the things that I have been watching recently is a, a documentary on Mary Tyler Moore. It was really fascinating. I'm very much of that generation. And so I kind of feel like I'm a little bit Mary Tyler Moore inspired today with at least from her, uh, her The Dick Van Dyke Show era. And that's kind of fun. So my top is, I think it's from Amazon, as are my britches. I just like these. They're just sweatpants, but I like them because they have pockets and they're not too bulky. Um, I always chastise Stuart that in these videos, I think I look fat because he uses <laughs> because he uses a wide angle. So you, uh, so you can probably relate to that a little bit. I wish I were as skinny as Mary Tyler Moore, but there you go. Um, the most important thing I want to show you are my color coordinated boots. These are high C boots, and right now there's a special discount code: fifteen percent off all high. C products just use the discount code Linda and we will definitely put a link below to their website um, my earrings are some and I, I really want to show you these I got these a year or two ago from one of you a follower sent me these oh, yeah. and they've got that oh, those the, are cool. yeah made from organic material I really really like them they are fun and they're lightweight which is also commendable when I'm outside working in the garden um, and I guess that's about it oh and, and my my little necklace that hubs gave me just as a, as a little surprise present just a little thin necklace so there you go there is my outfit du jour Well, as I have shared with you guys, maybe TMI, I have been getting really bad leg and foot cramps and I'm doing whatever I can to address that. Part of it, I think, is because I haven't been drinking enough water as I'm working outside and exercising outside. And so I'm trying to be better about that. <clears throat> what has helped me and what I find to be now indispensable when I am entertaining, and that is a water dispenser, the indispensable dispenser. <laughs> so we had it out here, I had it filled up with just um, just basically ice water with lemon in it. And you can see the remains of the lemons over there, providing a little acidity, <laughs> acidity to the Japanese maple. But what I have found is not only will I drink more water if there's water dispenser readily available, but so will other people. So since we were drinking wine and champagne and we some people were drinking beer, it's always important to have water that they can take a big old gulp of water in between a beverage. And not only that, it was great for the kiddos. And I did notice that we filled it up twice and it was drained each time. So what's good for my guests is also good for me. And on those days when I'm gonna be working out in the garden, I'm going to do the same. And I am going to fill this up with ice water with lemon, which I find really refreshing. I, I just bought this online and I have used it far more than I expected and I have lent it out a number of times to Leah when she's been doing some gatherings. So, so that is something that I'm trying to do is really, really drink more water and I encourage you guys to do the same, especially if you are outside and you're working in the heat. It's still nice right now, but I'm not naive and I do know that before too long, that heat is going to arrive. Now let me answer another question 
We had several questions that I've been holding off on answering until we did this backyard reveal. And one of them is and was, what is this topiary that I have on my table? And it is, let me read exactly what it is. It's a June Chen Hetzii columnaris, uh, basically an evergreen. And I bought this already in its in its current form, I, I think I got it at Lowe's. I think it looks great. It's tough, probably as tough as a ju Blue Point Juniper. It has the look that I want for back here. It lo will look beautiful in the winter. It looks great this time of year, and I think that's kind of fun. And then a side note on the candle holders. These are candle holders you probably recognize from the former home. I had them on my table back there. I love them. For years, I had loaned them out to my friend Jenny down the street. And when they moved, I reclaimed them. And now I use <laughs> them back here. And you'll notice that I have these taper votive inserts. There may be a word for this. I don't know what it is, but these belonged to my mom and they just have a taper like extender that comes off of them and you can put them into the candle holder. Now, why do I like them? Well, in the summertime, I think this table looks bare without these candle holders in them. But if I had candles in them, the candles would melt. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't want to have taper candles in here. This way I can do two things. I can have them with a candle in them, even though the candle is one of these votives that is solar powered. And I love these, you guys. Last year I had the larger ones and I found some that are more the tea light size that actually fit in here beautifully. So at night, when I look outside, these have been powered up and I can see these illuminated on my table with no work on my part. The same thing is true for the candelabra that's behind you on the ground there. That's an old pottery barn, one that I had that I spray painted and I've done the same thing there. All of those are solar powered and I just move it around according to where we are outside in the garden in the evening and it also is so fun to look out the back windows that flicker um, uh, when we look out the back windows we see them flickering in the night so that's kind of fun the table top i am loving this was another controversial thing some of, <laughs> some of you thought that you you liked the glass better i did like the glass but i didn't like how high maintenance it was it had gotten really scratched over the years Still and and you know night before last Stuart, when we had that terrible threat of hail oh, yeah. I was really glad that I had this wood table because in the past, this glass tabletop had been decimated by hail, shattered everywhere. And this one will, it might get some, some nicks and knocks, but it nevertheless is, is hail proof. So I love the way it looks. I love, I will love it even more when it ages and the polyurethane shine begins to fade a little bit, but I love the earthiness of it. And I also like the way it replicates the top of the table that I use as a sideboard. So, so that is that. At some point, I'm probably going to have to replace these faux wicker chairs that are on either end. I've had these for four years and they're starting to age and splay a little bit because I haven't always been good about covering them in the winter time. But nevertheless, I, I again, I like the or, organic slash cottagey, but still kind of contemporary feel they have with, with these pillows that perfectly are a color match to the current color theme that I've got going on right now. So there you go, there is that. This room, of course, would be the dining room. So let's move on to the kitchen after we take a break.
Well, welcome to my kitchen, which in a home is where everybody typically likes to hang out, but not so much here. I am the one who tends the veggies and tends uh, the produce in my own kitchen, but people can be nearby as I do so as they sit kind of in, in the living room area. We'll call this the living room with my solo fire pit, which has been one of the best places I've ever spent my money. We have just loved it. If you really want people to tell you their secrets, <laughs> then sit outside on a beautiful evening with a glass of wine with a lovely fire going not much wind and it's just a little bit of heaven just a, whether you're just out here with your partner or you are out here with a group uh, we have shared many secrets out here it's just it's just been wonderful okay so i have dubbed these planter boxes one two and three and yes i have noticed that i need another flagstone another stepping stone right here and i will get one those are easy fixes that you can identify as you begin to move in the space but i'm really thrilled with the way these came together because i planted them well this here has spring mix i've showed you this before it has spring mix curly kale i have already started to harvest from it because this is kind of pinch and come again and some of the Swiss chard and then I have all sorts of nasturtiums like I said you guys I, I know that I show you these things over and over again but part of the reason I do that is because I like to show you on a day-to-day -day basis what goes on in my garden so that you will look at your own garden through that same lens so if if it seems iterative to you if 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 you feel like I've, oh, we've been over that, then I apologize. But there is, there is a method to my madness, and that is it's just enjoyable. And I think the more I do it, the more I encourage other people to just kind of look at your own gardens in the same charming way. It gives me, and because it just gives me such joy to see, oh, look, look at how that nasturtium has grown up since the last time I checked. It's just a little jolt of serotonin when I come out here in the morning. Oh, let me just weed my vegetable garden. I love the fact that these are raised beds, that they are right at my hip height. So all I have to do is just lift off this gardening cloche, which I have to protect my arugula and any other little bloomers here, or eruptors here from uh, nefarious squirrels. So there you go. I've got some beautiful romaine that I have been harvesting and in fact, Stuart was wondering, he said, I heard a noise. She's over here crunching. I thought, what are you eating? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, because I was just noshing down on some of the greens in my garden. Now, I recognize that as this arugula gets taller, I won't be so, it won't be so easy to just lift off this garden close to do my weeding. But by then, I figure the arugula will be large enough that maybe I can remove the cloche, or if I can't remove it, um, there it'll be too covered up for the squirrels to be tempted because yes the squirrels the squirrels have found me so um, Stuart let's do a slow pan right here because yeah from what I think it's important to look at your garden from really every angle and even from the corners of your property because I can look and I can see oh look at the beautiful light play on those tulips in front of those geraniums over there or I can look and I can see oh there's a void in one place or I need some some verticality in another area and so I think it's important that even in out of the way spaces even if you have to even if you have to get lower that you can really see perspectives that you don't see otherwise you can kind of get a squirrel's eye view if you will That's yeah of what's going on and sometimes some of your best photographs are oh, taken yeah. from from a lower angle versus yeah versus a higher one. I 
there is a lot of sun today, which I'm loving. It doesn't make for as beautiful an image on the screen for you guys to see, but it's but we haven't had sun in a while, so it's definitely pleasant. It's definitely pleasant for us. So over here in this area surrounding the brick rug in entering into the kitchen, you can see that there's more ajuga here and more of those little coconut butterfly candies that are coming up. We've got some kind of downed tulips, I think partly because they didn't get as much light over here, but also because it's been, it's been rather windy. But that's okay. I just cut some. And yeah, and it's almost, it's almost time for the tulips to be over anyway. And that's okay because I'm kind of ready almost to move on. For a lot of you, I know that you haven't even had any tulips in bloom yet, maybe even any daffodils. So that's my question of the day. You guys have been telling me, oh, I've got snow on the ground. Oh, it's, it's really been bitterly cold. Oh, it warmed up. Uh, my son told me in Denver, man, it's been like this. But he thinks that it's now spring is almost here. So let me know what it's like in your neck of the woods. Have you seen your first tulip yet? As mine are practically on the decline. I am loving these autumn coral encore azaleas here. And they will play a key role oh, in the composition of all the different mounds. Yes, look. Look at those big buds. Makes me so happy. I love the leaves on this one. Yes, I do too. I sometimes think I love the the foliage, foliage, as <laughs> much as I love back as I love but yeah, back to the word <laughs> back to the pronunciation thing. As much as I love those. Now over here, I had someone plant these for me, and you can see that these they are hugging this chef's choice rosemary a little bit too roughly. And so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to move one. Now here's a garden tip. We need to put a little, little light bulb here. In deciding which one to move, I could move the rosemary or I could move uh, the encore azalea. So how do I decide which I want to do? From a practical standpoint, it looks like, oh, just move this rosemary but why am I going to move an azalea instead? Because this rosemary made it through a really hard winter, which means it's established and it's getting established. <laughs> and I am not about to mess with success. So the fact that this is pretty established and that I know that this azalea, man, I can get it established almost at any time. This is the one that I will be relocating. And this too has flowers on it. So that's just, that's just a fun little tip, I think. And see here exactly what I wanted this ajuga to do. It is blurring the lines of the edge of the brick patio so that I eventually will not see any of that metal edging. I am not a metal edging, metal edging kind of gal. And then finally in bed number three, I have all sorts of spring mix. You'll notice that, and I am noticing, and mentioning in my garden journal that over here this gets this box gets a lot more sun than the others get now it yeah. changes over the course of the day and it changes over the course of the season but that's one thing that i'm noting so in here this is probably where i'll have basil peppers um maybe some you know miniature okra things like that but right now it is housing some calendula some uh, arugula i believe is that what i planted i have to check my notes <laughs> arugula um, and also some more nasturtiums that will start to fall over the edge so all of these these are basically short-term plantings because they're cool season veggies and cool season veggies in short order will not want to live in Oklahoma much longer. <laughs> so I will enjoy them while I've got them. Over here, this planter box is finished. I have some medallions that have to be secured on the edges. And we will probably move this stepping stone underneath here and put something else to keep the base from rotting. We may even put these on casters. So we'll do that. And this 
will probably by next week it will be filled with some tomatoes that my friend Carolina Elizabeth brought me she started yes. some for me um, my friend Janet Bricks has started some peppers for me and so this will really get some of the oh the heat lovers because of the reflected heat off of this wall and just because of the fact that general in general it gets it gets more sun so I think that will I think that will be fun there's a couple of herbs that I've plan on installing in the ground. I picked up some fennel at Bricks. I've got some lavender here that may or or may not. I don't know if it will if if it will thrive. However, what did not thrive very sadly, so many of you have asked me, was that silverado sage that was here. I left the little trunk here. I, I, I you just noticed, I know, it's kind of sad. Leah knows. Okay. I, I've, I've shared the bad news with her. Um, I probably will have more Silverado Sage in here, but not that topiary. And even though it's sad and it was beautiful, uh, I also realized that maybe I hadn't planted it in an optimal place to, to get back here. It wasn't in a really good place for me to navigate. So with every disaster comes an opportunity. So I'll just, I'll just have to figure it out. And the Lamandra is looking great. The bay tree over there is happy. There are a couple of little, uh, you know, a garden's never finished. There's a couple of other puttering things that I'm going to do. Carlina also brought me some sage which is part of kind of my gray thematic here. I will plant this. I've got a little bit of, of dead foliage removal that I have to do on the pancake arborvita, but they, they made it through. I keep pinching back the artemisia, and this doesn't really matter where you pinch it back, but I'm pinching it back because I want this to not get overly tall, and I want it to be very, very bushy, so I'm doing that. Um, so I think that kind of finishes up this space and the kitchen area. So let's take another break. And who knew that I could come up with so many different rooms in such a small square of space, <laughs> but that's how I think about it. And it helped me with the design. So there's another tip for you. Think about even a small space in terms of how you will utilize the different areas, the different zones, and it will help you design your spaces too. Well, I think of this area as kind of the library with my tomes of plants that are staged on the different plant stands. And these will really get, uh, they'll, they'll get a lot more populated with different kinds of plants and things once the, the last frost date passes and I feel confident in putting some other things out. So right now I've just got some succulents over here. I've got some yeah, I've got just some succulents over here that probably will eventually want a little bit more sun than they're getting. And I've always liked that white pot on top. Yeah, yeah. And I've got some, uh, just some parsley getting ready to be potted up somewhere. And we moved. That's a long uh, No, that's, that's Italian parsley. It looks like cilantro. And then the wood we just stuck over here so as not to kind of be in the way because we were burning quite a bit of it on Easter. But then you might recognize these guys. These are the little topiaries that we did and that by the way, I did on channel nine one morning. Um, they've got a, a segment they call on the porch and I, I did these on channel nine. I'll see if I can find, I talked about them then too, but these are really turning into double balls pretty quickly. So that just goes to show how quickly you can make a topiary out of a, out of a one gallon plant. And again, there'll be more seasonal color over here in the way of probably angel wing begonias and things. But then this seems to be all of my topiaries, my myrtle topiaries are very happy over here. They like the amount of sun they get. They like a little bit of the, the protection from the wind that they get back here, which is another reason sometimes to shut my squeaky gate. And I've got just a little bit of color over in here. And this too, this too will transition with the season. 
as it gets warmer out. But I like the way you, you can see them from a number of different vantage points. And those are my plant stands that are on that are on QVC. So I'm really, really liking the way they look. Over here, there's more of those little co coconut budleyi <laughs> that will fill out. There's another form of cut leaf artemisia here, which I just keep pinching back. So I should, you know, I should time it, Stuart. We should take a still of what all this stuff looks like. Mm, I like the fragrance on that. Uh, what all this stuff looks like now on this date, at the beginning, the first part of April, and then also take a still of what it looks the first part of June to see how quickly it has grown together. And then July, just kind of do a monthly, a monthly update pick because that will be fun for me to have in my garden journal. And then lastly, and thank you guys for hanging out with me on this backyard reveal. To me, it's done what I wanted. Um, I've often said if, if, you know, for those of you that don't like it, well, you do you and I'll do me. <laughs> and there's no one form of beauty, but I love it. And as importantly, hubs really loves it. Stuart, if you just slowly torque, you can see he's got the window open there right now. And he can sit in his dad chair just inside and he can hear me puttering outside and I can hear him inside. And he can smell the scent of pignon wood and it's all just just lovely, I think. And we, ex for those of you who saw this earlier, we basically did extend this patio a little bit. So now it's just easy for Hubs to pull out his grill. We can pull it out. He's got plenty of room over here that he can use to grill on. These chairs are mobile. And this is one of the things that I, I learned about entertaining in this space, that it was so nice. We had a number of little kids here, and it was so nice to have this area over here where the little ones and the moms and the dads could kind of congregate. They could sit down. I had out some of my boy's favorite springtime little kid books, children's books, and I had some of those out stacked here with some little goodies for them. So this was kind of like a kid zone. And I had blankets out for them, for those that got a little bit chilly. And they just really, they liked having their space that was close to everyone else, but yet it was kind of detached. And I kind of like that feel too. And this is the area where I anticipate you will see many potting videos in the future. And it's great because I just relocate these chairs, put up my collapsible potting table, move it out. I've got all of my, my materials and supplies back here. And I don't think it looks too cluttered. Um, we moved the compost composter over a little bit, but it still has kind of a clean organic look, which I like. And the, the uh, air conditioning surround, I'm so glad we didn't make it any taller. A lot of you suggested, oh, it needs to be a lot taller to hide the air conditioner. Well, I didn't want it any taller. I thought that would feel a little bit too imposing. So we just needed to wait till it finished off and we put a cap piece on it and I reused one of my finials. We had painted all of the utility boxes and pretty soon this gorgeous Japanese maple here, here will fill out and completely um, if, if not almost completely obscure all of those utility boxes and it will arch over this way and make beautiful shadows and it gives balance to the Japanese maple on the other side. So this whole area has come together in a way that I love. I'm still waiting for a little bit more ajuka to fill in here. I'm, I've got a little bit more to arrive and I'll plant it. There's still plenty of space um, to travel in here. It's easy for hubs to get up and down these steps and go directly into the garage or directly into the side alley. So speaking of going into the side alley, um, let's take a break. I'm gonna show you one last thing before we say goodbye. 
So right here, I have this little utilitarian alley, and this is the way that I can get things that are heavy or large from the lower level up here. It's where my composter is. The next time I harvest this batch of compost, I probably will spray paint it in that gray color so it will really, it will really hide. A number of you have said, oh, why don't you paint this fence, that cottage gray? To me, it already looks an appropriate gray. And I like that look. And also, this isn't just my fence. It's also my neighbor's fence. And I want to be respectful of that. And I don't want any of that gray to kind of filter through. To me, it's just fine the way it is. I have hung my ladder, my wheelbarrow, my two-wheeler. This is where I can store any kind of mulches, potting soil, happy grow, things that are going to be returned to the nursery that I can recycle. I've got some of my starts back here waiting to be planted but what I like is that there is a gate here and I can secure this at night I put a lock on it and from a security standpoint that makes me feel good and I also have all sorts of monitors eyes what are they called cameras. Stuart cameras thank you <laughs> cameras there that can detect any activity in the backyard and then right here <laughs> right here is my plant hospital so I, some of these plants don't look good enough to be in the ground right now. Some of them came from the greenhouse and they are not dead, but they're not full grown either. And so, for example, the angel wing begonias that I cut back, those are back here. And I just leave these back here where I continue to feed them. Some of them I will repot. Um, here is a topiary that is just starting to come out again. These are things that don't look presentable enough to be on display right now, but I can have them here where you really don't see them and I can tend to them. And, and more importantly, this is an area that they get lots of light. So then you can look from that vantage point to the back and you can see how it kind of all fits together because Garden design is nothing if not a puzzle that is put together. And then it's also fun because when all of this isn't here, this is where Hubs stores some of his treasures, some of his favorite rocks and things. Ooh, and he, cool. yes, and he selected this spot, <laughs> you guys. Um, he could have had it in, a, in another area, but this is where he, this is where he likes, this is where he likes to have it. He likes the tree trunk, he likes the gnarliness of the tree. This is his little, um, his little temple back here, in addition to being my plant hospital. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. This has kind of been a long-winded um, tour of the backyard, but like it or not, <laughs> it is done, and we <laughs> love it, and now all I have to just do and play. So, from my Vauder backyard to your home, Thank you, and you guys have a great day.